Hello. Cheers. 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 Cheers to you. Cheers. Aww. Aww. We're some feminine all, bitches. We're some, we're some feminine bitches drinking yeah. some pink wine. Oh, yes. <laughs> Look at us. Oh, yeah. my God. We have the boobs out. We have the boobs out. We have yeah. pearls on. We have everything because. Lipstick. I don't have that. Unfortunately, I don't have that. Whatever. Well, it doesn't matter. I do. Today, we're going to be talking about the feminine mystique. Mm. Or rather, just the feminine creative spirit versus the masculine creative yes. spirit. Because I think that there's a big thing in the, the battle of the sexes right now. We're coming back at it in a more balanced way. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about XX, XY, triple X, <laughs> and, and everything in between. Yeah. So Extra large. Speaking of X, yes, that too. Speaking of X, we are drinking X Rosé. This AIX Yay. in French is pronounced X. Um, like the X double X chromosome. Like the X exactly. boyfriend. That and, oh, the X boyfriend, that too. <laughs> and But see, here, this is what's so beautiful about X is that, so we have XX, we have XY, as you yes. may know, and Mike is going to tell us more about the cute little I'll chromosomes. Try. But on the bottle of X, on the label, are you can't see them. I may try to show them on there. And for those of you who can't see anything because you're listening to us on the podcast... That's great. We love that. You should also subscribe on YouTube. And those of you watching us yeah. on YouTube right now, you should click on the subscribe button. Click on the little ding, ding, bell button. Ding, 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 ding. Yep. Because you want to know whenever we come out with a video, which is usually every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Most beautiful day of the week. It is. So, yes. <laughs> so, on the X label mm. are two little Mandarin ducks. And X oh. is the Latin word for the Mandarin duck. And they oh. live as a couple, and they are very oh. complementary to each other. And they're a little oh. masculine, a little feminine. They complement each other's energy and spend their oh. lives together. It's, it's such a beautiful it's thing. It's like the yin and the yang. It's the yin and the yang. It's you and your imaginary husband. It's me and my inner husband. <laughs> yes. It's very harmonious with him. It's so good. He's so, so nice. He doesn't get mad when I ever spend put your boobs too much out money. or spend time. <laughs> or I put my boobs out on a Any YouTube it. video. And he's like, <laughs> babe, whatever you want to do, it looks like great. Are great. You look great. You look so good always. Yes. And you sound beautiful. Yeah, and he thinks I'm amazing. Yeah. So, so yeah. on a more serious note, we're gonna cheers to you. I'm turning like all like pink. We're I know. Because we we're look pink, like pink. we have a rash, but we it's, do. it's, it's cute. not. It's just rosacea it's from pollen. drinking too much. Exactly. <laughs> We do this for you guys. We we really don't want to drink this much, but we have to. We're just well, we very, help it. we're conscientious. Yes. Let's taste it. I will tell you about the history of the oh. rosé, and then we will start talking. I was talking. supposed to wait to taste it. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> uh, just kidding. We were going to talk about creativity and how it's expressed from a feminine and a masculine mm -hmm. way and how to be more balanced in your expression of your creativity Yes, so that you can be as successful as possible as a creative, creative. whether you're so a man creative. or a woman right we're so equal opportunity yes we are it's beautiful we but, love so here's to the feminine mystique cheers to you let's taste this beautiful pink bev that we have here mm. nice and you know what i like about mm. x is that it's it really is, good it's delicious. It's not too sweet. Just like us. No, it's, it's, yeah. not, it's, it's not too sweet. Yeah, it's, it's not a little dry. Just like us. And just like us. <laughs> no, I do like... It's pink. Just like us. I mean, that's why I like um, I like Savion Blancs that are really... Uh, dry and... Really dry herbaceous. and minerally mm -hmm. and, you know, where you can taste the, the calcium and magnesium. Totally. And, and so this is a Provence rosé and in Provence I think you can really taste the terroir because it's it's land that's been tortured and that's what's kind of funny yeah no I love <laughs> land that has been tortured right I mean I didn't know, I know that's what like, it was scorched called. earth that's me no but I <laughs> love that flavor torched earth flavor right it's it Seriously. totally no, to in me. in French they always say that the the vine has to suffer I think that's to true. Express and a that's why I'm one. so amazing because I've suffered You're so incredible. much. So cool. <laughs> it's so good. This is the padding on the back edition. Yeah. We're just going to keep doing that. We're going to be leaning in and patting ourselves on yes. the back because that's our theme. Like, today. what other great thing do I do? Oh my God, so much. So balanced. But um, yeah, so the Provence is an interesting place for this to be from because, first of all, it expresses the terroir. It's a very dry and hot region of France, you know, southern France. And I like Provence myself because there's this romantic uh, love poetry tradition that comes mm. out of Provence where the woman is really regarded as, the, you know, not only a muse but a participant in the whole love poetry, which I thought was beautiful. There were mm. some female troubadours, and I so I like that whole part of it. 
but the X wine is an award-winning rosé. It's delicious because it's, of its, it's absolutely de delicious. It is absolutely. It's really we highly recommend it. Yeah. And um, so basically, the notes that they say, I'm gonna read this because I'm tired. Um, so it is salmon pink. Uh, yes. Thank you for yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, check. <laughs> and it's um, it's got watermelon, strawberry, and flowers, which I'm thinking subtle, subtle watermelon, strawberries, and flowers. It's like much. an unripe watermelon. Yes, and so then they do 30% of rosé bleeding and 70% direct pressing, which is very interesting. So it's not, so it has some pressure and some trauma to the grapes, but not fully. Right, it, so it, it lets, probably releases some yes, of, it can express some of the elements of the, uh, the grape in the, the First, skin of the grape, which yes. would be the more tannic, right? The and more, then the actual grape, which yes, is more the sweeter, sweeter the more, more juicy, soft part. and juicy. And see yeah. how this all goes with our theme uh, of the femininity and, yes. the, and the then being rough. And I love yeah. this. I think this works. It is nice. We needed kind of an easy like lob of a theme, and I think we yeah. got it. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> if we don't fuck it up, we'll be really. I mean, good. I tried to do the episode naked, but she was like, "You're I not know. doing like, that. I can't, I can't that. tolerate." She's it. like, "Put on something lower cut," and I was like, "Okay, <laughs> how about this?" She's like, "No more, more." So I was like, "Go back, <laughs> take it off." I was just tired. So the um, so the blend is Grenache, Syrah, and Sasso. And Sasso is actually a very small boutique grape. It's not something that's very yeah. I don't even know that grape. Used no exactly. Sanso? Sasso. Sanso. Sasso. Yeah. And then it's... Wait, what does that mean, Sanso? It doesn't mean anything. Oh, it's just, it's just it's the name. name of the grape. It's the name of the grape. Okay. And um, so it's from that, like a region or something. It, well, it is. I think it's local to the south, to okay. Provence. And, um, and it gives... And that gives it a depth. It mm. gives it a little something extra, which I like. Like women have depth to them. We have something extra. We always. have a little saison. Yeah. And then it's fermented at a cool temperature. Mm. And, you know, and we can be cool. Once so I guess the coolness... Helps. Kind of controls yes, yes. the growth, and or well, the, it the, controls the expression of the sugar, the right. sweetness. Yes, and it'll have it kind of uh, ferment at a slower, more harmonious pace, so that it can then express things in a more subtle way in its own time. Much mm -hmm. as much women, like the female, yes, the female line, yes, very much. We so. have been more fermenting. We we are well, and actually, that's a true. So research has shown that women tend to sit back a little bit more that's more in the female nature and so many of the things we're going to say you guys might they're disagree. a little yeah they're a little bit and more we're gonna be generalizing just a little yeah, bit once in a while a little bit. and then we're gonna be debating and we're gonna be if you guys think we just say something horribly offensive and you don't agree we want to know about it it's down below it's awesome the the youtube algorithm loves comments whether they're nice or not so we don't care. Yeah. um yeah no comment below we we love it and we want to interact with you guys and know what you guys are thinking and what you want to hear more of yeah i mean so, i think yeah. i think that uh, you know we're gonna go we're gonna dive into some of these classic yes. descriptions of female, female male versus male creativity yes. however i would say i would argue that you know just as a disclaimer mm -hmm. we we should always you know, give a disclaimer yeah. every time <laughs> we should have some kind we of don't disclaimer necessarily we, we don't describe 100 percent to any of it to either one i mean i definitely no. f find myself being both Consider classically feminine and classically masculine well, and in, that's in our, a lot of ways. And that's our thesis today. Yeah. Me being the, the PhD nerd, let's postulate in our thesis mm. that in order for a creative I've to be... always wanted to postulate. Don't you want to? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I love postulating. Um, that the, the creative, in order to be very successful, whether mm. a male or female, needs to be psychologically more androgynous in order to be successful. And mm. we will describe what that well, means Well, what do you mean later. by that? Well, that's... Oh, the end because okay. that's my thesis. Okay. <laughs> this is, oh, okay. So this um, is we're postulating. We're, we're creating the, the, the yeah, thesis. That's our thesis. And then we're gonna build. Yeah, that's build how it works. all the arguments that's how it works. regarding how that. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I don't have a PhD, people. But you could at the end of this, like you're at gonna. The end, have a I have a PhD. Yeah. I'm gonna give and... you an honorary drinking PhD from. I love you that. Know, Akavane University. Oh my god! Will you make me like a? Um, I'll make you like a, a, a what are those? Like a, <laughs> make your diploma. Like, will you make me a knight? No, I can't knight you. I'm not a knight, so I can't do that. I'm not the queen. I mean, I think I'm the queen of my house. <laughs> That's not what I am. <laughs> I, I, I think Fiona should should knight us. She thinks she's Empress Fiona. Yes, we might be knighted by the end of the night. We may be by the end of the night. That could happen. But I can make you a fake diploma. No problem. Oh my god, will you? Yeah, totally. Okay, great. Yeah, that'll be good. Right. So All right, let's keep going. Yeah. So let's talk about. So you're going to tell us a little bit. You're going to educate us about XX and XY. 
Yeah. Oh well, my god. I'm rather... Speaking of Empress Fiona, she's barking now. So I yeah. think that she owes us. She's gonna get X X X X out. X. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So X X versus X Y. Can you tell us? Yeah. A so X X is the female chromosome mm -hmm. Stronger, sequence. I mean, perfect. Yeah. I mean, I was reading some article that was, you know, pretty much. Dry. researched <laughs> and organized in Berkeley, California, and that should just say it all right there because they are, That's... like, it's like the quintessential scientific... Totally. You know, like, you, you'll you be like, it'll drive you to drink, let's put it this it way. Yeah. I don't care if you're an X or an XX or an XY. You will, or if you're you somebody's won't... X. We don't... I don't care if you're somebody's <laughs> XYX. Give a shit. No, we don't care. We <laughs> we're don't gonna get, you're gonna want a drink. Yes. After you read this article. And we recommend um, X. And, it, and it, this article kept leading me down this path of like, it, it definitely alluded to this, like the female is mm -hmm. becoming more evolved somehow. Ooh. So the XX is the female chromosome that yes. makes you a female. And from what I understand from biology class, it's stronger. Is everybody is pretty much an XX until sexual differentiation, which happens, happens I think, around the fifth month. Yes. So you are... Or maybe a little earlier than that, actually, It might happen a little bit earlier, yeah. but it, I, I would say maybe fifth week, uh, we're making... We're I feel like it's ass. a little bit later in gestation than... No, because you can see the baby, like, when you have that first ultrasound, you can see whether it's a boy or a girl. But isn't that at, like, three no, months? No, like three months, yeah. So, yeah. So, so three it's, months five, would be... I'm thinking four, five... Four... That's 12 weeks. Right. But yeah, I'm, so at 12 weeks, so three months, it's not, before not five weeks. months. Right, I'm thinking probably it happens around five weeks is what I'm guessing. Okay, Maybe. so if you're saying five, I'm just going to give you that five number. Yeah, so something matter. like that. I mean, yeah. again, we're not we're not, we're not scientists, scientist. okay. um, as, as if you couldn't tell, <laughs> <laughs> or historians, or historians, or, or a mathematicians, or anything accurate, or any of those like things. anything that, that has like facts. Yeah. You might want to yeah. check them. Okay? You might want to check that, um, but you might want to also check your expectation at the door. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to our podcast. Anyway, we're going to give you some things to think about, and you can always go deeper. You can go research into and then you can say, the "Oh my god, they didn't do their research. I have to oh add into this." You can mansplain I, it to us. We're yeah. like, "Yes." Can you please do that? Mansplain it in the comments. Yeah. Happy. Yeah. I definitely want to be mansplained. I love. It. I, I, I love like, Rebecca I Solnit. Some, right? I want some mansplaining with some manspreading because I like the manspreading too. Like if Ooh. they can like manspread it, like, I'll just sit there and mansplain. Oh my god. I actually secretly like it. It's fun. It's fun. It is fun. It's, it's fun. Nice. So, so yeah. anyway, uh, and also can we put another little disclaimer? Layer? Sure. I that love we are not man hating not at feminist all i love men bitch faces exactly we love men we love masculine energy i adore men we love feminine energy we are we love men that are feminine and we love feminine we like it all yeah that are boys who like girls who are look yeah, like whatever like we don't, we don't care. care we don't care but if we like you we like you and you know it and you know, know who it. you are and if, you, if we don't like you you might Ooh, oh. and it doesn't have anything to do <sighs> with your ex wife it doesn't or your ex ex See, right now we don't like the dog and she's kind of and we don't she's know an ex she ex well, yeah, she's yeah, yeah, yeah. she's got it chromosomes yeah. all over the place anyway <laughs> so the chromosome thing is interesting because yes there's a sexual differentiation that happens at some point which we don't know when well i it don't know matter. if you've ever read middle sex by yes Jeffrey i did and I, I actually really loved that book i loved lot. that book a lot i thought it was i thought it was very sensitively written oh it was beautifully written before and it was actually early it was before this whole kind of sexual identification yes and sexuality and transgender transgender and gen like multi because you have the which sex are you which gender do you ascribe to yes. what's your sexuality like oh those are all different things and this was before that whole thing was so all over the place and i thought it was really it lovely was and such a and beautiful, beautiful yeah beautiful way that. to look at it through mm -hmm. the lens of somebody who actually Is experienced it. intersex type yes uh, whatever you call it i yeah, mean just in a nutshell it was basically you know a lot of these yeah these, a lot of these children were born hermaphrodite and it was very common mm -hmm. historically mm -hmm. and then they would just pick your choose. your it sex yeah. for you for you and yeah, not awesome. and then these kids would grow up. They'd go into puberty, and they'd be like, "Wait a what minute, what just happened? I was uh -huh. raised as a female, but I'm a male, or whatever, mm -hmm. yeah. whatever it happened to be." But um, yeah, so and that's why, and sometimes in our and yeah, and here we are already going down the rabbit hole. Like, yeah. I think in Easy our society, it, it, when you're not looking at things in a creative way, because I think when you, again, so we brought up the androgyny that happens in creatives, yeah. and I think, and again, when we say androgyny, we do not mean that that makes somebody hetero homo whatever yeah it doesn't actually enter into it at all it's a psychological androgyny mm -hmm. that means that your creative mode is both feminine energy and masculine energy which i think we should probably probably define, define what we quickly. mean by that yeah exactly 
but I think that the non-creative way of looking at things is that people are going to define very quickly what's feminine and what's masculine and also sure. putting things into buckets that I don't think is helpful. So should we describe, okay, let's describe what we mean. Well, by yeah, some of the, the ways that you can define masculine and feminine. So feminine is considered to be more nurturing. It, these are, mm -hmm. these are very general. These are general, terms, but they, they tend to be ascribed to more, a more feminine right. approach. So uh, nurturing, collaborative, collaborative is, uh, more receiving and gathering type yes. stuff. Um, more waiting and letting things gestate, which makes some sense. Yeah. You know, letting things kind of, yeah, gestate to the point where they're ready to be brought out. Right. You know, I mean, so if you think of all of the actual biological um, roles of women, then you start to, and if mm -hmm. you want to make it all, you know, symbolic of creative stuff, then you start to see what that means with creativity. Sure. You know, and what you see as the roles of women in society of kind of, you know, teaching also, I think is kind of a little bit of a, yeah. it, it, well, teaching in a different way, teaching like those kind of collaborative and, and. Well, yeah. And you also see it, you also see those feminine roles, you know, that were considered more nurturing or more, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mothering or the those things that are to i mean you generally and this is changing but this you is know, changing which is you a good often thing because, think of yeah. a nurse will be a female and a doctor right. will be male right and that's now changing a lot oh, it's and it just, makes a lot of sense yeah but that's an interesting that's an interesting thing but then but that i just wanted to give an example of how oh, this right. plays exactly. out mm -hmm. in actual roles Absolutely. in the world that people recognize oh, every day completely completely and and then you've got and it's just also the the kind of you know societal thing where the women would be together gathering things to feed more yeah, of a they would be cooking together, right? Or... Whereas the men would be out there, kind of contests. Like it's more the men is more the masculine energy is more competitive. Sure, more competitive, it's, more aggressive. When you think of the tools they use, there's more of a thrusting movement, whereas the women is more of a gathering movement, right? And that's either sexual or just in terms of the tools that you're using. You know what sure. I mean? So the fighting and the aggression and the you know putting things out there and you know higher, ejecting things ejecting. Out. It's true. Yeah. It's true. But also, you know, higher yeah. volume, um, more, you know, kind of, yeah, faster movement and maybe not thinking things through the whole way necessarily, like kind of getting it out there really quickly. Yeah. And we think of it as harder versus softer. Absolutely, so a harder yes. approach versus a softer approach. Completely. Completely. And yeah. I mean, and the reality is, is I think now we talk about things that you know, in, in this, I think they already knew probably, you know, a lot of like Chinese philosophy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the, the ancient philosophies and religions would consider these masculine and feminine energies Completely. and then everyone well, the embodied yin, yeah. both. And that's the thing. I think that a lot of the ancient philosophies grasped that with the hermaphrodite sure. figure, which is, for example, that's a... That was an old figure that was very divine. Mm -hmm. The hermaphrodite was, you know, the symbolic being that it encompasses was, it all. It was almost like the serpent eating its tail. Like, yeah, these these energies are they're 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 they need recycling to be. within the totally. entity, and they need and, to be combined. Yeah. So you can't be just gather, 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 gather with nothing coming out. And yeah, same you'll thing, be you a hoarder. I mean, right, no make exactly. shows about you. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you can't be thrusting, thrusting, thrusting. You'll be a man whore. And yeah, you'll be on a porno. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 I mean, pornos make a lot more money than hoarder shows, but... That's true, too. Yeah. Anyway, you get where we're going Yeah, this. you need a balance in all yeah. of it. And so there is... So that's what we're saying about that, you know, creative thing where, you know, they used to say, oh, that's not very you know, masculine, or that's not very feminine. Sure. But the, the females who've succeeded in the art world or the creative world or the business world definitely have some male characteristics, but not saying that they're masculine. That's not what we're saying. We're yeah. saying that they have a toughness to them, you know, and my son often would say, he's very artistic, and mm -hmm. he'll say, I'm sensitive because I'm a creative. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't understand that as a creative, you actually need to have more toughness than anyone because it is such... Yeah. A tough and that's field. one of those you know sensitive artist I mean mm -hmm. I often will describe Paul my boyfriend as a sensitive artist type yeah but he's probably got an extra tough layer he does as well I mean because... he does but he's yeah I mean he definitely and when you think about sensitive it's not like oh you okay. know it's more yeah. of like an awareness and it's I more mean, of a it's... accepting yeah of, of accepting those things because that's the thing when you have too much male energy mm -hmm. and not enough feminine energy you're not going to be receptive 
to, to the things that you need to take in in order to have an interesting artistic to have a more output. Whole, wholesome or a whole body approach to something. Right? You yeah. know, you want to consider, and, and I think we were talking about um, Sheryl Sandberg. I was exactly going to bring it up right now. Yeah, Sheryl Sandberg's right. Lean yeah. In. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I read the book and I, you know, it, it's been considered somewhat thought of as the third wave of feminism. Yeah. Is it the third well, wave or is it the sixth wave? wave? I don't know. Right. It's like, I was thinking, because I was reading about the feminine mystique a while uh, today yeah. when I was, I was researching this, and I was like, oh, okay, which wave was that one? And yeah, then, I think it is considered like the third wave of feminism. It but, might be, and I think in some ways it was kind of damaging because it... Well, when you have a, a highly privileged, mm -hmm. highly educated white woman yeah. who is kind of talking about feminist politics mm -hmm. you know from this very wealthy privileged platform mm -hmm. then you know it is which is where we want we want to essentially have women in positions of power entrepreneur, sure. entrepreneurial power however mm -hmm. it is you know it's one particular ray of the light of the lens that we're talking I about see, feminism, yeah right? but, yeah but i think that you know you talked about this white woman is putting it out there and privileged but i think that what we're trying to establish is that femininity and masculinity are universally human yes. characteristics yes. that don't i don't think they're financially racially social you know socially sure. dependent really except it's true that it does affect success to some level, and that's where the whole lean-in thing happened because not every woman wants to be a CEO. Not every sure. woman has that desire to succeed in that arena. But I guess Charles I Sanders. guess my response was based on this idea that it was considered the third wave of feminism, and mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. consider it I actually, don't consider that at all. No. I didn't actually consider it feminism. No, I considered it a kind of manifesto and kind of actually proof of the whole uh, psychological androgyny thing yeah. that we're talking about where she's like, don't be content to be in your female role that is, you know, leaning back and receiving and being collaborative yeah. only. You do need to lean forward and kind of gently assert yourself yeah. and kind of transition into a slightly more androgynous role where you have a little bit more of a forceful... Where you can bring both elements, bring, yes. the female, mm -hmm. ma the feminine and the masculine energy. And yeah, and I read the book and, and probably um, one of the most useful it's funny because I you know I worked with my brother for a long time and mm -hmm. he would always say oh you need to read this and you need to read this person and you need uh -huh. to read this business person and I would always read the books that he was reading oh, but it was funny because I would you know I was reading her book and I was like you really should read this and, and what did he say to that yeah I'll check it out I don't think that he ever read it mm -hmm. I felt like you know here's a very successful business person and he has that creative side to him yeah. he's got that sensitivity to him and you thought he's going to be balanced in this no yeah. i i i kind of assumed that he wouldn't be oh well then um, you were right <laughs> but you know i know him better than that. but yeah. yeah so i kind of felt like that would be in in my mind the only mm -hmm feminine perspective that he might read oh. and because of her status because of her status yeah, yeah. and really that's what be. i'm afraid of mm -hmm. happening with these kinds of approaches is that mm -hmm. you know we're only going to and and also that it's being associated with feminist waves yes you know, yeah that concerns me because yeah then, that's silly this sh it shouldn't be about feminism no. it should be about our existence and our success and our expression sure. of what we want to do and so i was telling you about that really depressing research about how the there's this total skewed vision of you know creativity so if you if, if you're told they did a, a i think it was harvard university did mm. a study 1500 people so you show one piece of creative expression, whether mm -hmm. it's an ad or a piece of written work or a painting or whatever, and you tell the people a woman did this or a male did this, and they say every time, or almost every time, a huge majority, the male is more creative. Even if it, they lie, you know, they're like, here's the here's a painting, a man made it, a same painting, here, a woman made it. They'll be like, oh, so every the male they... is more oh, creative. Oh, interesting. And that kind of drives home this whole skewed vision. It's internalized. It's yeah. an internalized 
Right. And then you wonder, okay, so to compensate for that, because that's what then well, translates I mean, into the pay gap. I mean, know? the one the, thing that I have to say, just to finish that Cheryl Sandberg right. thing. Right. No, well, that in, continues in, in, with the Cheryl it, No, and it, yeah. it is, it goes with what you're saying yeah. is, you know, she talks about how, you know, women have this and it's considered a negative attribute that we're too emotional. In oh, fact, yeah, I liked that in fact, we have mm -hmm. that history of hysteria. Yeah, and hysteria. That, yeah, quick, and, take out her uterus. Yeah, she's hysterical. She's hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> and she needs a hysterectomy. Yeah. And so, you know, it. She talks about like being, you know, people saying like, "Oh, well, you're, you know, women are too emotional about the deal or the project or whatever it is." <laughs> and that's and crazy she, talk. And she was like. Well, why wouldn't you want to be emotional about something that you're doing that's important I, and meaningful to you? I like, think that, that why think wouldn't that, you? Like, I think being emotional about things in the business world are really crucial. I think too many times there's a detachment where you don't consider the fact you don't that consider that you're making clothes are, in a sweatshop or yeah, you're abusing people, people are in the, yeah, or, think about or you're destroying side. the environment because absolutely because you're like this is business. There's right. no uh, there's no that, room for emotion or yes. feelings or. Or thinking about, you know. I'm still with you. I think half and, the problems and I, we have are because because of this masculine, yeah. uh, too much of a masculine approach. Absolutely. Too much. It's Absolutely. out of balance. And and that's the thing. We're also, you know, some, you'll see some products that are made, you know, other than, you know, there are some things that are toxic. And that's because, yeah, yeah somebody was like, oh, we, we're making money with this and it's good enough. But then also products that are, you know, more engineering based products or something. They're not sure. beautiful. And you're like, what would it cost you? to make this thing be beautiful and to make it be pleasing sure. to use and to make it be able to be used by more people because you know you have these things that are tools that are for men you know and then they they're like going to make pink tools for women and you're like no that's come on let's think of our humanity yeah, let's think and about can something we work together can you do functional and beautiful can't you totally. do yeah i mean you can you can like can't you do something that's responsible and economically viable sure you know i mean and that's the thing where i think we bring together the masculine and the feminine energy and use it to our advantage i mean mm -hmm. that's why you know creation takes both sides and that's yeah you know, i mean it just does a scientific thing. unless you're a banana slug Oh my God, if you're a banana slug, maybe the banana slug is so like banana slugs perfection. Are, they are hermaphrodite. I mean, they are hermaphrodite. I mean, yeah. a lot of them are hermaphrodite and they will and they meet can, up on the trail. Yeah, and they're like, hey, and then we they have a can kid? decide. And they're like, should we have who a kid? wants to be, yeah. who wants to be the male or the female? I kind of love that though. Like, imagine yeah. that. Like that, okay, so we were talking earlier about how people- It's more creative. Right? Like imagine the whole sex differentiation thing where people are like, ooh, you're a girl, we're gonna dress you in pink. And all of a sudden you hit puberty, you're like, oops, what's this? Yeah. If you were a banana slug, it'd be so nice because you grow up in the woods, going through, you know, the, the eucalyptus Leaves forest and, and you're like, yeah. this is awesome and I'm yellow and I'm cool and I'm a banana slug. Yeah. And then you're hanging out with your friends and then one day you're like, oh, <laughs> hanging out with your friends. Well, your banana slug friends. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Come on. You're, you're slugging and around. You're slugging around. You're like, hey, slugger, hey, what's slugger? going on? And slugger's such a neutral, you know, it's yeah, like a nice neutral, like, slug. I mean, is there I mean it's a neutral? little bit, yeah. I mean, it's a little bit baseball oriented. A little. A little. People are screaming. In yeah, the there's a bunch we of screaming going on. We're hoping it's not a disaster. No, we're hoping, we're hoping, hoping that like a far. comet didn't hit right? because I did get like three text message messages all at the same time from different people. So it could be that a comet, Haley's maybe, comet, just hit the planet, maybe, and then like the sacred feminine all of a sudden is going to come yeah, bursting from the comet. Totally. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. No, but I think I mean imagine the 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 freshness of being like, and I'm not even just talking about deciding I want to be a boy or girl at this age, but wouldn't it be nice if in any creative partnership you sat down with your creative yeah. partner and you said, listen, this is the role that I'm more comfortable with, and but how can you bring out this complementary mm -hmm. side of myself better and how can I work with you to help you express this role that, yeah. that works towards our project? Like I think that that would be amazing for communication. It's such a strength to have those Well, sides. yeah, and, and I think, you know, I think everyone's had this experience. Well, I don't know if everyone, I can't make that assumption, but speak for yourself. But yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but I think, sure. you know, there have definitely been. Our, our listeners have had this experience. I have a tendency to have a more, for as a female, I have a more considered by other people to have a more masculine approach to things. Do you? We, yeah, I mean, I think it, it's. I mean, maybe. We're both big mouths. Because, I mean, is that why? Because we're loud? Maybe because we're loud. We're very. We're considered to be intellectual. We're scary. I know you don't see that on the show. Mm. This show brings out my more feminine side. Yeah. 
Sorry yeah. so much. Mm-hmm. No, but you know, do you know, I mean, we've brought up the, this point before that some men who've watched our show or part of it, you were saying about your brother refusing to read that. Oh book. my God. I, and, I sent my brother and he was like, oh yeah, I'll check it out. And mm-hmm. I could tell that he was like, he, when we talk on the phone, mm-hmm. he will actually say that he will talk to me about really great podcasts, but and he will never he ask me about mine. Yeah. But also, I think that, you know, and I was speaking with one of my friend's husbands, and he was like, oh, no, I'm not going to listen to that because, you know, this this is this creativity thing. It's not real. I'm only going to listen to science or math. Right. And then another person, another guy, he was like, oh, no, no, that's very manly. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, you're what literally. The and it was the fuck? picture. And he, he pointed out the picture of us. He saw a thing on Facebook, us wearing our bras on top of our clothes, which we <laughs> thought was freaking hilarious. And not manly at all, by the way. I mean, yeah. come on. Give me and a break. he said it's very manly. He was so threatened by the fact that we're wearing our bras outside of our clothes and talking about intellectual stuff. And he was like, oh, no, no. That's manly. That's not feminine at all. And I was like, I beg to differ. Oh, because we're thinking too much. We're thinking too hard. Instead of drinking. Instead of drinking. We, should be we are rosé. thinking safe, instead of drinking. Safe pink beverages. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's interesting because I... Speaking of which, I'm going to refill Yeah, can you? Because I um, no, but so I, it, it's funny because um, the whole masculine, feminine thing is, is so interesting. And I think that... I don't remember... <laughs> You're like, and I know that I forgot. No, there was was something I was gonna. No, there was something I was gonna say about it, but I forgot. I forgot. Well, no. So let's so let's bring back this thing about the success factor of you know how men can be more aggressive in Mm. business and in art. They can bring out that that you know they have the creative side where they've kind of gathered their inspiration, Mm. but they've got the masculine side where they can forcefully project what it is that they want to put out there and that automatically because they're men the psychological construct of the the general public at large is like oh they're so so creative yeah so but i think do... there is a lot of factors i mean i know you were kind of saying like economics doesn't really affect this feminine masculine thing but i think it affects but it does it a lot after well yes it does after that it Be- does it doesn't I, I was saying that the actual the the observations that we have sure the truth behind what the different energies oh, are okay, yeah. is not affected by economics mm-hmm. however the whole skewed bias does affect well, the yeah, economics because a lot if men yeah. if men typically are you know fundamentally making more money in yeah. our culture and they're making and more they have more access to the resources yeah and they're, they're getting more attention and i actually think that you know this whole idea of not to go on a feminist rant because i'm not going to but i but i actually think the whole solution to that and i'm not the only one that thinks this mm-hmm. that you know women should have their own you know they should have their own creative life they should have work that they do and Mm -hmm. value they Mm -hmm. should have a way to define themselves outside of what their man does whether they are financially dependent on a man or not Mm -hmm. that's between people Mm -hmm. and couples absolutely because i have i have friends with gay men couples that you know one of them is, is, the feminine is, one. Fi- is financially dependent on the other and considered to be the more feminine Yeah, they'll be like, who's the, couple. Who's the woman yeah. or who's the top or the bottom? And, right. they, and people will ascribe the same roles. And, and I'm, like, I'm I don't wondering, think that's there fair. is something to that. There is something to that. So there's something there. Energetically, there is something mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. this male feminine thing. Mm-hmm. I, but I think the solution to a lot of our problems is to honor both of them. Yeah, in every absolutely. person, and yeah, and to honor and value because yeah. I think that the the creative work that a female traditionally does, and so I was I sent Micah. This is really funny. I sent her this morning this horrific article from a Catholic website. <laughs> I don't have anything wrong with Catholics. But... No, there's nothing wrong with Catholics. We love Catholics. That's not it. And also, the Catholics always kind of they. They value the sacred feminine. They they do, and I actually have an altar to the Virgin Mary. The Virgin Mary, and I think the Virgin Mary is gorgeous. No Virgin Mary. She wasn't Uh, a virgin. Yeah, but um, but we're gonna call her slut, but she wasn't a virgin. Right, exactly. We're not gonna slut shame Mary. (laughs) I mean, like take it easy (laughs) on him. Calm down. But um, right, but but I think that. The, so the Catholics, this whole article that I sent her, which I found really funny, because at first, the funny thing is, the first paragraph of this article that was talking about the feminine creation and the feminine as a creative and creativity, 
I was like, oh, here, here. Yeah, that's right. Damn right. Yeah, women She's should be able sucker. to. I know. I'm stuck. I was like, oh, yeah. Because of her creativity. And she I was, was like, like, yeah, sign no. me up. Yeah. And it was hilarious because it was this whole thing about how women should stay at home because it's too exhausting for a woman to be out in the male you know, male force dominated world and how see how their creativity will come back if you allow them to stay at home in their because they're too weak to to be active all day long and they need to be able to simmer down see that makes and me want to kill someone dying. it makes me want to like oh my god i was dying laughing i was like that no but there was so also the part good. where that i read because i didn't read the whole thing i mean let's be honest see, i i was I like i sent her an article i was she like read the whole thing because what did she think i was gonna stab my eyes out you're like your brother yeah is with you i'm not that bad but um no i normally read the articles but i did a scan through and i was like oh fuck this article because there was, was the part hilarious. about was the, the part about like the more creative you are, yes. the more feminine you will become, yes. and yes. therefore you will you will attract a more masculine yes. man. Yes, yes, and, like, and you'll want to clean the house more. Yeah, and raise more children and, and wear like, lingerie. It and was amazing. Oh, I, I didn't say anything about lingerie. There, no, there was nothing about lingerie. Was this article, I, was like, I was like, where's the was, lingerie in this article? <laughs> I was like, what is going on? But but it was it was such a funny article though like there were parts of it where I was like oh yeah yeah give women the time like value their yeah, creativity I was that's like that's right. awesome but then I realized what it was all about it was all about make women stay at home because it's so much better for yeah them. well a lot of good that did my friend who's going through a divorce her husband was adamant oh, that yeah. she stayed home she had more education than him you told she was you had, anti right she and that bothered like that is. Horrible. That's one of those examples that's so oh, traumatic. Oh my god! I you know, like it. Yeah, it took all my strength not to like it, it does, run and, over and, that guy and with that's, my car. And that's the thing where I think that any woman who like I think it's good to take a big honest look at yourself as a woman. Well, or as don't a man. agree to things that you don't ultimately agree with. Like right. yeah, like I had lots of conversations and arguments with her about mm -hmm. that agreement of staying home and not working, and you know. And sometimes that's the best thing you can do, but I think that you need to be really careful because economic, like in my situation, like economically and just in logistically, yeah. it was much easier for me to stay stay at home, except hold up, because I was able to get yeah, my but education. You're a, but you're to a an author. Level. I mean you right. you're a writer. So Yeah, well so I stayed at home, but I never had a hole in my resume. Put it that way. Like right. I stayed at home, but I you were have, writing for magazines. I was working you were, exactly. I mean, you were always working ever always. since I've known you. Always, yes. I've. I've I mean, had you were doing more careers, like yeah, of a like you were doing different like. What do you call it? Like, I did projects you sometimes, did. which kind of shot me in the foot sometimes. But you did a lot However, of like design projects. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you were I mean, writing for I've, magazines. Right. I've it wasn't like, like the yeah. full-time gig like I've been doing. It wasn't a full-time go-to-the-office gig. It did take me all the time in the world, but often I was able to do it from home. Right. There was some traveling involved, but yeah. And then, you know, first I had the magazine gig, which was like 12 13 years, something yeah. like that, at least that, 15. I remember that. Um, and then I had the interior design career, which, again, that's great. You can do it from, that's a, and so many women, look in the design world, that this is the interesting part, so many women are interior designers, very successful ones. However, who are the ones who are the superstars? When you look at the list of the top designers, more men. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's that bias. I do. It's, that's a little infuriating. Look at the TED Talks. If you look at the ratings of the TED Talks on any platform, more of the TED Talks that are listened to by so more why, people. So why do you think that's because we have this cultural it's a bias? Yeah, it's a col cognitive cultural bias yeah. against the fact that women are just so soft. We're just so... And look at the artists. Like, remember Jackson Pollock and his wife, Lee. Yeah, Reynard. oh, man. They, she was, I mean, it was her was his, idea to do that. It was her that. idea. She was his teacher. She was the first one to come up with that thing. And people were like, no, this is so masculine because he's striking, he's thrusting and spraying the canvas. And it's so I never got into that guy anyway. She did that. That was her. And he was so much more of a so we and want, commercial success. We want these versions of things that are yeah, I mean they come out as masculine. So even yes. though that was a feminine idea mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from a female. Yeah. And then it was co-opted by a and, male. And it was delivered then, by a male. Yeah. And then then it's acceptable. Well, look, even in the music world, it's like, I look at music as like, if you look at Madonna, for example, who was very successful, however, you know, huge 
financial success, but she's always reinventing herself. Male artists rarely they don't reinvent have to. to that degree. They don't have to. They're and not Lady asked. Gaga is the same way. Like they're and one of our friends, one of again, well, and that's friends, the like, story of like men like different flavors. Right. That's the right. cultural story of that's like, thing. You, have to, you know, as like a woman, you have change to, your hair, change your lipstick, change yeah, your makeup, lose some dress, weight, dress, dress differently because the men like the variety. They in like life. the variety, but yeah, yeah, it's fascinating, and you know, it's funny and because, I don't know, like, yeah, I don't know how true that is. I mean, I don't think I don't know. I think it's one of those stories that we've been told. But you know, our friend Mina was saying that she thought that the complete transformation all the time of Madonna and Lady Gaga, for example was because of a lack of, um, you know, of confidence in a way that it was something trying to prove something all the time. And that, you know, those moments when they're themselves are extremely rare. But I think that male singers tend to keep that same persona for the longest mm -hmm. time. And I just think that that's a really interesting thing. And then you look at somebody like Beyonce, who's, you know, oh, the queen, the queen, the queen. But really, when are her most successful moments? She's going on tour with Jay-Z all the time, which I think is lovely that they're this mm -hmm. creative couple. And I think that people worship them for being that yin and yang mm -hmm. a little bit. But, man, I mean... I don't know. I don't see like Solange, Beyonce's sister, who's much more creative than mm -hmm. Beyonce is. She doesn't have anything near the success, right? That Beyonce, who's partnered up in a yeah. traditional way, has. Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, I like. I'm not going to name any names, but I heard this thing through the grapevine that someone told someone else that if you are not married by a certain age, people think you're weird. Oh, and this is so weird. Yeah, somebody oh. think or not weird, but somebody thinks some people think something's wrong with you if you're not married by a certain age. Well, there's that whole thing where if a woman's not married by age 35, like yeah. she has more chance of getting struck. So by this lightning. woman is a young woman mm -hmm. doctor that I know, uh -huh. and this older woman doctor that I know told her that well, you should you should think get a about getting married. Get a starter because, marriage. It's better than because if you're not married by a certain age, then people think something's wrong with you. Yeah, and that's the so, thing where a man and and, and I think her. Forever. I think what she was saying was that professionally, mm -hmm. this is going to hurt you if you're yeah. not married. Yeah. It's going to hurt you. See, so and, that, and that's entering and into like, our whole thing of that balance. A woman, we're not considered feminine in right. the ways that right. is it's palatable. disturbing. Palatable, yeah. right? It's, to, no, it's true. Palates. No, yeah. but it's true. But it's it's disturbing if a woman isn't going through those. So that actually made my blood things. boil. Oh yeah, actually made my blood boil. It's not surprising, but so many women do that though. In order to succeed in society, succeed in business, so many of them will go through the starter marriage concept. Where you're like, oh, wow, so a failed relationship is better than no and, relationship and at I all. And I actually think oh. that that is, that is actually the, I think it's actually the opposite. I think yeah, no. that women, they, I think they are still invested mm -hmm. in the patriarchy, yeah. in the terms that it exists right now. Mm -hmm. The one that they argue, hashtag me too, yeah. holds them back. I think they are invested in it mm -hmm. still. Because yeah. they want to be able to depend. They don't want to take responsibility for their own mm -hmm. careers, their own education, their own money, well, their own success. Happening. Right. There's a they lot do of not want to take. Yeah. They do not want to take responsibility. And I don't want to piss off a bunch of women. No, I know. Well, that, that's the thing. But I, but like, I will yeah. tell you, I am not loaded. But whatever I do, I mm -hmm. do it on my own terms. Right. There's no man telling me. Right. Except my inner husband. Your inner husband. He likes he's to wonderful, shop. But he's wonderful. That guy but likes to shop. He likes to shop. But, you know, the thing with that, with the blame thing, and I... I again, think women need to start taking responsibility right. for their own shit. Right. Because, again, I and don't... And all this patriarchal shit will fall away. It right. Because, like, okay, let's... Because we're invested in the patriarchy. Right. We get something right. out of it. Yeah, because, like, let's rewind we the whole thing that we said, you know, this whole skew, this whole bias where the men are making more because of... But that is something that little by little can fall away. However, I just read a piece of news last week that was just the saddest thing I've ever read that was because of the Me Too thing, more and more men are afraid to be in a, an office with a woman. More and more men are afraid yeah. to work with a woman because of the blame, 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 blame Me Too. And I get it that some people went through some real 
traumatic situations. Sure, I'm not but denying shit, that. Yeah, no, I'm not I'm denying, not denying, that. denying it. At I mean, all, what Bill but... Cosby did is fucked up. Oh, it's so fucked up. Unacceptable. So fucked up. Drugging but, women to have oh, sex with them. It's like, horrible. fuck you. No. What an asshole. And and you know the whole casting couch situation and everything. I, that's not. I okay. hate it. However, let's admit as well that some people bought into it and were like, fine, I'm going to do this. Then it's a choice, and we are okay with that choice if that's totally. what you thought. That's what you needed. Hopefully, we're going to be coming up with some different options I, from that, some alternatives because it is fucked up. But let's also wake up and see that some of us are, you know, there is the masculine and the feminine energy. And how do you choose to balance that within your own you life? You have that to. That is fine. Like, I don't you care. You have to bring yeah. both elements. And it is, not, it. it is not a victim mentality. No. It is no. conscious. It is. No, if you want to sleep your way to the top, whether you're a man Go or ahead. Man, do it. Go ahead. We don't care. I don't fucking care. It's fine. Like, if fine, you were like, I slept yeah. with everybody on the way and okay. I'm successful because I did. Yeah. Great. I yeah. will still be friends with you. I don't give a shit. Totally. totally. However, you know, don't do that and then and cry then say, to me about so how... I didn't want to do it. Yeah, I didn't want to do it. Like, What'd you get out of it? Like, yeah. what'd you get out of it? And and again, like, is that the only way to succeed? It's not. There are ways to... You know, it, are there faster and slower ways of succeeding? Are there easier and harder yeah. ways of succeeding? Yes. Make the choice and just make it happen. But like, you know... But but there is you know and I think men too and we're saying women 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 because well, we're because women that, because and we that's how we identify exactly and we see that that and this is where we this, stand this is where we issue. stand and this is what our lives have been like I mean yeah are we as you know financially successful as you know we could have been is it because we're women and maybe we had kids we had a biological imperative yes yes to all of that however are we still super positive that we're gonna like well I got caught up in a lot of. Yeah. relationships with men that you know and and the reason I can talk about like taking responsibility is because it's something that I feel like I've had to do mm -hmm. where you know I've spent a lot of years supporting myself supporting my mm -hmm. daughter and mm -hmm. feeling like I you know I finally come to this place where I'm like okay I'm doing this because I'm choosing to do it I've had yeah, opportunities and I love that I'm not choice. as I'm not as young as I was, you know, and I've had opportunities to be with different men and be supported on a certain mm -hmm. financial mm -hmm. level and and I've but, chosen not to do it. Yeah, because but also, I didn't want to make concessions in other ways. Sure, but pe some people do it. Some people do get supported financially by a man or a woman. It doesn't matter. Like yeah. you know, I know couples where the woman has told her husband you know what? I'm making more. And that's what we were talking about before. About, yes. You know, sit down, make that decision of yeah. like, listen, this is my strength. This is your strength. Let's make it work. Let's not care about whether you're technically a man or a woman or what, you know, let's come up with these roles and let's make each of us feel best in this partnership. Right. And that's where two little ducks come back into it. Like, yeah, it is nice to have the yin and the yang. And if you're not partnered up, then you're going to be the yin and the yang. Yeah, you have to find a way. You know, have like an inner husband a, if you're yeah. more feminine. But like, or, find yeah. a way to have that balance. And so if you are living with somebody and you have that partnership, it's going to be more complicated because that balance has to work within the two yeah. of you. If you're by yourself, you have the luxury of being like, how does this balance work for yeah. me? And I think that that's really crucial. But I think that it's really important also when we were talking about the psychological androgyny, it's important not to feel bad about the parts where you're like, oh, when people are like, oh, wow, she's such a hard ass. What a bitch. You're like, no, no, no. If right. I was a guy, you wouldn't say that. Or a guy who's sensitive and who's looking at it and it's like, oh my God, what a pussy. No, that's not yeah. fair. That is stupid. That's an old way of thinking. And it's, it is. It's upsetting. It is. Because it doesn't make any sense. It's, it's really keeping people back in both mm -hmm. senses. To tell a man that he has to be a certain way and that he has to be like grabbing his crotch and, you know, being a yeah. hard ass in order to succeed not true either you know and we don't have to dress a certain way or speak a certain way or do mm -hmm. you know but we have that strength like whatever is natural to us that we can use to our advantage i think that that's a wonderful well and thing. i think i think that's the beautiful thing about people really talking about how how they identify the beautiful thing to me about it is is that people are really owning how they feel because yeah. i've like i said i've always felt a little bit more mass a more masculine female mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a lot of times I've been gotten involved with different relationships because mm -hmm. I feel like oh it brings out this more feminine side of me right and that's really interesting and then the converse of that because is like I want to know that side of me right but then but you've got that thing you don't have that same thing that some people do who are like oh I'm not like other girls like that's not you no no you're, no like you're like me where we're like I'm just we're like gonna, every other girl yeah no, no. 
No, but you're you're. I think we are a lot like a lot of other girls. But yeah. Where we're extremely outspoken. Yeah. Where we're gonna be a little loud. We're a little gonna more be a little aggressive. Bit, a little more aggressive. We're we're we and think overthink things. We think yeah. We but also but overthinking I think is a feminine trait. Right. A little bit. Yeah. But we're putting our. I consider it a masculine trait, but I consider the or. intellectual world more masculine. I think it depends on the type of intellect. Mm-hmm. Like I think I think that we're kind of incorporating all the different mm-hmm. kinds. But I think like look at us right now. We're doing our video that we're putting out there, and you know I put my books out there. You put we're your fire. We're thrusting it. We're thrusting it all the time. In your so face. Masculine. In your face. In yeah, your no, face. So ejecting <laughs> and ejecting <laughs> yes. and projecting. Oh, yeah. And it's no, like, so, yeah, that's us. We're, yeah, we're, that's us. That's us. In a nutshell. In a nut, it's just a, in a nutshell. In nut. a nut in a nut sack. <laughs> yeah. No, so that's how I mean, so that's how I think that we're taking that masculine part of the yeah. energy and we're using it to get our art out there. And so I think that all artists like take a very sincere look and say, Am I, I like, missing I like that, side, that? Right? Am I missing yeah. a side of myself? Am I am I overthinking this and and saying oh well that's not feminine or that's not masculine therefore I'm going to forego this one part of my personality Mm. or of my psyche that could make me more successful in a creative realm Mm. yes I like that no I mean it's true I I do think as you get older you Mm -hmm. start to be a little self-reflective about your own part in things I, I think I mean I, I hope that. that you do it's always good when you do yeah I, I do think that that this is kind of that time in life where you I think it is I think it's our creative happy hour because we get, of, we're, yeah, the where you're just like, like you're being self-reflective about <laughs> where you stand yeah. with yourself that's so true it's so and true. then that's... you know what you're bringing to the table and I what guess you're bringing to the bar <laughs> what you're bringing to the bar stool yes. and you know who are you leaving the bar with yes yeah well that's i mean and that's and, and again and the, as we said like that's a crucial thing as well who are you cho- like who are you choosing to and that okay that's another little tweak to what we were saying because we're saying yeah. if you're in a partnership okay what if you are a creative who is single right now but looking at entering into a mm. romantic or professional partnership and we talked about having that talk be really honest with yourself and be like, okay, maybe what I've had in the past, like mm-hmm. you were talking about seeking out men who are going to make you feel more feminine. Yeah, and I wasn't really cognizant of that right. until, yeah, I mean, it, until the last crash and burn and I was like, oh, oh that's what I'm doing. I finally got that there was something about that pattern mm-hmm. that made me feel in these more general terms, more feminine right right and so then you look and see was that useful for me is that still what i need because that can yeah, change too you know it, it's not i i think yeah i think i've incorporated it and i think that there's definitely i think sometimes when you buy into these like certain programs you're mm-hmm. like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna get the like you know i'm gonna get this menu and it's mm-hmm. gonna have this 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 and this right and i think you know I had one part of the menu mm-hmm. that I felt like, oh, I felt feminine. Mm-hmm. But all these other parts of me were, we're not being there. denied. You weren't, yeah, you weren't I was like, that I wasn't feeling, yeah. yeah. And so I think with my relationship now, I feel like, you know, I have this part where Paul on many levels is very masculine in ways that mm-hmm. I that I particularly define masculine. That well, I that find this music, like I don't know, like so she's never inter- she's embarrassed that I'm gonna like. No, I'm not embarrassed. It's she, like it's. I have friends that to me. No, she's embarrassed. Me. She doesn't want to introduce me to people. She doesn't understand no, that like everyone's true. seen us together, or, like on YouTube. Like I'm. Not I know, like we're, <laughs> we're like like the, like her and I are more involved than him and I are more involved. Let's be honest. But I know him through his music. Yeah. <laughs> I know you through your music. I know. That's what she's music. gonna say. I know, I know you through I know your you music, through music, man. Music. I know everything about you. No, but I find his music. Deep. But his music is very is very masculine. Yeah. But but it plays with these. His. It, but he plays also, with all these like feminine. Very much so. These contrived he, feminine. Yes. Yeah. And he plays with this joking. Mm-hmm. It, there's a femininity mm-hmm. to some of the back and forth in his music. Yes. It's very interesting. See, so when I meet him, I'm gonna be like, I know everything about. No, he's very. He's like this perfect balance between masculine and feminine. Perfect. And, That's what and I like, say. She said his you're physical perfect. in his physical form, he's very masculine to me. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, yeah, in his physical form, yeah, he's, he's very masculine think, to me. And but then he has all these other feminine traits. See there? 
the the musical artistical yeah. you know thoughtful nurturing parts yeah that offset mm -hmm. all of my intense <laughs> all masculine you're crazy. traits all you're crazy yeah so oh. but it's interesting because i don't have to make these concessions about these other right. female male well, and I think parts that, of myself and i think that as as a creative like you're aware of those things and i think that you're able to create that balance yeah. in the relationship that you want like that's that important creative role is no longer just creating your works but it's creating the life that you want mm -hmm. and that's that's creativity as well is yeah. learning how to balance those things yeah i like man whore the whole podcast i know I, love I was it. a little drunk. So I love the man. Whatever. Right. I was drunk See? on the creative possibilities. I love it. Getting drunk on the creative possibilities. I mean, is, it happens. Sometimes. It's a creative thing, and it happens. And it I happens like it to the best it's of us. Awesome. Cheers, you guys. Cheers. Comment down below if Please you think do. that we went overboard. If you think we I went we too did. far. We hope we did. I did. You I ejected totally. some I ejected. I ejaculated all over, all over the place. place. It was awesome. I hope that. You just totally. Like, I hope that you have to, like, take a shower. She blew her creative load all over I hope that you have to take a shower yes. and just... So cheers to that. Cheers. And we'll see you next time. Cheers. Okay.